Hello, my name is James and welcome to Mirror Domains. And this is a movie review for Downton Abbey. Now, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you are fans of the series and we're looking forward to this movie. And a lot of the reviews out there are probably people who have seen the series and were anticipating this movie. But I want to give you a different perspective here. I've never seen the series, so I want to give you a movie review for Downton Abbey from the perspective of someone who has never seen a single show from the series. Did I like it? Did I hate it? Did I not understand what was going on? Well, let's talk about it. So, Downton Abbey. It uh, is directed by Michael Engler and tells the tale of the continuing story of the uh, Crawley family. Crawley family? Yeah, that's it. From Downton Abbey, uh, the owners of this huge estate in the countryside. Um must have been like during the early 20th century or something like that because it's not uh, current times but it's just uh, about the time where we see cars and it's, i think it's after the world war uh yeah so <laughs> first world war obviously yeah right i think so let me know in the comments below if i got that part right but yeah that's what i'm going to talk about is that i never saw the series but i want to show and share with you my perspective of the movie because i think the movie should be able to stand on its own without the series. And for the most part, looking at it as a movie, I think it did a terrific job in doing so. I didn't really uh, need to know exactly all the characters, but I got the sense that there was a rich tapestry that they were pulling from with these characters from the different uh, class systems that they had set up in the house from the people who were in the lower halves you know the servants and stuff the cooks and stuff and the people the actual family and of course this movie revolves around the uh, arrival of the king and queen to downtown abbey to stay for a night and how that kind of causes a bit of a kerfuffle uh well how you know how they planned and made that happen and that was fascinating like that that uh yeah that was kind of really interesting to watch the uh, the movie moves pretty moves pretty quickly for a, a movie that's just over two hours. Like the pacing is fairly good. I never felt bored in it because the cinematography in it was fairly well done. Like it's breathtaking. They did a really good job at photographing the rooms, the estate in the whole. You just got that whole uh, feeling of being immersed in that world, and that was really cool. I like that. As far as the characters go, like the story, I thought it was well done. Um, as I said, they did a really good job of distinguishing the uh, differences between the classes. And I really enjoyed that perspective and how, you know, it was almost like an honor for the uh, servants and such to almost get the privilege, privilege to uh, uh, serve the king and queen, which was I, I felt like, yeah, that's, that's good storytelling. I like that. And how, you know, all of that process works and stuff like that. Now, I'm sure there were storylines that were continued from the series that I wasn't cluing into, but it didn't take away from the film at all. I'm sure it only enriched uh, people's uh, enjoyment of the film. And I'll talk about that more when I get to the scoring of it. And um, yeah, the, uh, the production values here were top notch. Like the the set design, the costuming, whew, wow, yeah, like all the, the tuxedos and dresses that the women were wearing and the guys were wearing, which is like really well done. I just got to say that uh, for the most part, as a movie that stands on its own, I got to say that I really enjoyed this movie and I wouldn't have guessed that it was based off of a series. But uh, knowing that it does, it does make me kind of interested to go back and watch the series and to try to learn what happened in, you know, leading up to this. Because it's kind of interesting to be almost at the end of this era of where these big houses, these big estates had like these big uh, households that were uh, maintaining it. And that was very fascinating. Um, now, this is not going to be for everybody, obviously. Uh, people who are not into this kind of uh, a period piece may not be uh, into this. But for the most part, the audience that I was in when I went to see this, there was a lot of laughter during it. And at the end, people clapped. So it was, uh, I think, fairly well received. And I think this was kind of 
a, a good kind of swan song, the end, the capping of this story of Downton Abbey, uh, because it doesn't really leave too much more to be explored after this. I, I just liked how it just kind of it felt like it was wrapping things up at the end. And uh, yeah, for that, I would have to give this movie a fairly high score. So let's talk about that score. Here's my score sheet. If you are curious about how this works, I'll leave some uh, links up in the cards to uh, explain every category, but for the acting, I gave a full two points. The directing, I gave uh, 1.5. And uh, the story, yeah, as I said, it, it unfolds very well with all these multiple threads. You get the butler's story, you get the cook's story, you get, you know, the family story, the cousin's story with Maggie Smith, and that's why one of the reasons why. Uh, the acting gets a full two points. Like, there's just so many good performances as an ensemble. It totally works. And I liked it. I enjoyed that. Um, moving on to the score and the cinematography, I gave a full two points uh, there. Each one gets a full point. Um, because, as I said, the cinematography is breathtaking at times. You just, wow. Yeah, it's, just, it's a beautiful, beautifully shot film. And the score just highlights and accents the emotions you're supposed to be feeling at certain times and it's it's just really helps you get immersed in that world it's just uh yeah it's a sight to be behold you, you you will want to see this in the theater it's worth the buzz that everybody's talking about and moving on to the watchability factor okay so this is where the movie could gain more points if you were a fan of the series and uh if you were a fan of the some of the story arcs getting closed off, you know, the story could get more points and the watchability factor could get more points. But for me, I would say, yeah, I'm going to say, see it once. And you could probably see it again for just the, the sheer production value of seeing a good quality film. Uh, but I'm going to stay with a one on the watchability factor. That means you go out and you see it once for sure in the theater. And after that, it's just up to you if you want to see it again or if you want to own it on Blu-ray. And there you go. Eight out of ten for Downton Abbey from somebody who's never seen a single episode of the series. I thought it was great. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I wouldn't be shocked if somewhere along the lines this gets nominated for some uh, awards in either the technical aspects or... Maybe even in the acting. It was just, it was just really well done. Um, that's it. <laughs> YouTube is recommending a video for you to watch right there. And you can see my latest one just right up here. My name is James, and you're watching Weird Domains. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe.